Hi and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here today and in this video I'll be sharing with you this beautiful sunset painting uh, done in watercolour. I'm painting on a small watercolour block today from the company Arsh. Uh, it's sized 7 inches by 10 inches or 18 centimetres by 26 centimetres. The colours I'll be using today are now on screen. Um, I'll pop a full list of everything that I'm using in the description below the video as well. To begin with, I'm wetting my paper all over with clean water using a large flat uh, 2 inch wash brush. You can see that the only detailing on this paper is um, a line drawn very lightly in pencil about uh, two thirds of the way down. This is just my horizon line marking uh, the sky and the water. So the first paint I'm putting onto paper today is some raw sienna. This is going to give our sunset a lovely glow. And on top of that, I'm beginning to layer in a little bit of alizarin crimson. You'll see that I've used uh, my brush to draw out a small circle here. I'm leaving this uh, as plain white paper and this is just going to be our little sun popped up in that top third. Because the cotton paper that I'm using today is very forgiving, uh, I'm able to start lightly and just build up my colours and build up my layers slowly uh, and work towards the depth of colour that I'm looking for. Now while I was adding in my ultramarine blue, you'll see that I uh, <laughs> just got a little absent-minded and actually painted over that white spot that I'd left uh, for the sun. Uh, but don't worry if this happens to you, uh, you can fix it like so. You see I'm using clean tissue, I'm dabbing out this whole area. Uh, it goes back to white uh, really nicely because the paint on there is not too heavy. So I'm uh, just adding a little bit more water and paint uh, to this area to keep the same sort of consistency of wetness. Uh, again, a little bit of burnt sienna, marking that sun back out and then just pulling the paint around it as if nothing ever happened. And if you decide that even that's not quite enough and you want it even brighter and even whiter, you can use a little bit of tissue and just dab out basically a finger mark uh, and that will give you again that lovely crisp white sun. So I'm just going to keep going ahead and adding in the colours uh, that I like until I get it to a tone that I'm happy with. The ultramarine blue mixes really beautifully I think with the alizarin crimson hue and uh, gives this lovely sort of rich purple dusky tone which I really love for these sorts of cool sunsets. Uh, so I'm using it really quite liberally here. I'm trying not to mix it too much with the areas that are quite heavy in raw sienna uh, because I don't want it tinted green, um, so I am just really focusing the ultramarine blue along the areas where I've got quite a lot of alizarin crimson already on the paper. And you can see as well that uh, I'm using wet and wet technique to uh, just paint in some small detail into the water that's going to be at the bottom third of this painting. I'm essentially mirroring the colours that I've used in the sky but keeping them uh, much paler and much softer for the reflection. And this is really one of the fun parts about working wet and wet with watercolour is that you can just go in and uh, do these lovely sort of soft coloured strokes with the brush and get this uh, lovely soft diffused edge uh, and the colours all marrying and mingling together really happily on the paper. And I found that as long as you uh, keep your um, 
water quantity consistent on the paper so sort of don't add in really watery paint on top of uh, where it's already begun to dry uh, then you'll avoid getting things like blooms and cauliflowers uh, stuff like that that can make marks uh, as it dries now I'm just going to make a little sun path here so again I'm using tissue just coming down from the sun there, blotting out a little circle, and then I'm just going to do a few um, uneven little dots underneath, which is going to give us our uh, slightly scattered sun path. So while the sky is still nice and wet, I'm going to add in some clouds, and I'm painting these wet and wet, uh, and I'm using a blend of colours including some opaque white gouache or you can use an opaque white watercolour paint for this uh, something like zinc white uh, would probably work really well uh, and I've mixed this with a little ultramarine and a little alizarin crimson to get these lovely sort of soft semi-opaque purple clouds and you can see I'm just painting them on really loosely here holding the brush at the uh, end to uh, get this sort of gentle horizontal sweeping motion and just sweeping the tip of the brush really lightly across the wet paper and you see these clouds are going in really softly we're getting these lovely diffused edges uh, it's a slightly awkward technique um, but it's my favorite technique to use uh, to paint clouds the uh, only real difficulty here is uh, not getting carried away uh, it's very easy to be quite heavy-handed with these sorts of clouds and uh, too many just blots out that beautiful sunset that you've worked so hard to create. Uh, but I couldn't resist studying um, a small cloud halfway across that sun there just to really sort of bring that sky together. And now I'm just re-emphasizing that sun path as the uh, diffusion has sort of softened that down a little bit but I'm really happy uh, with how that looks now. And now, uh, just before I leave the painting to dry, I'm going to add a little bit of horizon in. So I'm going to get a, uh, a distant bit of land across uh, this line here that I'm painting. Again, just using my regular mop brush, uh, using ultramarine mixed with a little bit of white gouache just to help it stand up against the uh, colours that are already there. And I've added in a little bit of neutral tint as well, just to darken it down and give us that uh, slight sense of distance. And this is just going to really uh, help to emphasise that horizon uh, once the painting is dry. You can see here, uh, I've got slightly more neutral tint on my brush, getting a few sort of darker patches into this landfall. Uh, making sure it's not too flat at least, uh, not on this left hand side, adding in uh, some distant trees, a uh, little bit of shape, a little bit of shadow. Now I can always go over and make some adjustments to this once it's dry, um, but I always feel like it's quite important to get something like this in uh, before it all dries, so a little bit of wet and wet, just because uh, you can see along the underside of that line we're getting that lovely diffusion into uh, the water there and that's going to serve as our reflection. We don't even need to paint any extra reflections in, it's uh, ready made for us. So now the painting is dry and it's time to work on uh, adding a little bit of foreground. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my mop brush, uh, just holding it really loosely, horizontally, uh, and just sort of blot in a bit of land into this corner here. Now I've mixed up a colour using ultramarine, uh, neutral tint, and some white gouache to again give it a little bit of interesting opacity. And you can see I haven't actually fully mixed my colours. There's a bit of variation there on the brush uh, as I add the colours in, uh, which helps, I think, to just give that little bit of interest to the land and make it not look too monochrome. And uh, the same as I'm doing here, you can actually dab in a little bit of extra colour as you go. Got a little bit of extra raw sienna on the brush and I'm just sort of dotting it in here. Uh, you can see the paint is quite thick, uh, quite rich colour and quite wet. 
and the reason for that is because I want to start adding some foliage but I want to keep the colours uh, all working together so I'm using my uh, small brush to just begin working on the land a little bit more uh, carefully adding in some extra sort of parts and details but also to just start spiking up a few uh, little textural grasses out of the colour that we've already got there. I'm also trying to make sure that I don't fill in uh, too many of these little gaps here that I've left uh, where you can see the colour of the water peeping through. Uh, this is just going to be some extra little puddles of water uh, with the light glinting off it that's just going to give our land that extra uh, little bit of interest and a little bit of texture. Now I'm just going to build up a little bit more uh, colour, so I'm adding in some neutral tint uh, mixed with plenty of water in the same way uh, that I did before for the land, so holding my brush sideways and just dabbing it on quite loosely. This is in preparation for adding a little bit of extra white gouache, just plain white, uh, not mixed with anything, and I'm just dotting it in lightly here where I've got the neutral tint uh, and plenty of water already on the paper because uh, when it sort of blooms out I really like the patterns that the white makes when it sort of uh, bleeds into the rest of the colours. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of encouragement here uh, with a clean brush once again. And now again just using the point of my smaller brush to begin spiking up that white gouache into the foliage that's uh, already been created and just really get those colours working together. So once I'm done with this section, I'm going to leave it to fully dry once again. And this is how it looks now. Now the reason I want everything to be really fully dry uh, is because I'm going to show you a little trick. Um, this is just going to pull a little bit of pale colour back into our horizon line. So you need uh, clean water, um, a good flat brush and a ruler. So I'm using my ruler and I'm carefully positioning it basically where my horizon line is or rather where it should be. I want a little pale uh, line of colour which uh, is just going to differentiate the sky from the water which I did lose whilst I was putting in my wash but uh, wasn't too worried about that because there is a way to do it. So you want a damp flat brush ideally um, with quite sort of stiff bristles and then you just really carefully and cleanly uh, pull the brush along the edge of your ruler. So I'm going quite slowly here I'm just trying to be really careful uh, and just uh, keep that line fairly uh, clean and when you're done you want to lift the ruler away upwards don't drag it down the page because then you can drag uh, the paint because essentially what we're doing is lifting here in the same way that you would uh, with water and a tissue perhaps if you had made a mistake. And I'm just going back along this line for emphasis. I did end up doing this line a little too thick but there we go. We lift the ruler upwards and then we quickly wipe away with a tissue any excess water and there is our line. I'm going to uh, thin it down in just a minute uh, but I'm also going to show you that you can use it in a slightly more uh, subtle manner and I'm just going to use a little swipe here just to get some glints of light on the surface of the water. You can see it's exactly the same technique, you just position the ruler, make sure your brush is clean and you don't want it really really wet for this, you want your brush to just be damp. So you get a clean swipe and then again brush with a tissue. I'm going to do a couple more um, 
off camera just because the way that my filming equipment is set up makes it a little bit awkward with the ruler um, to uh, to do this. So you can see I've added a few more lines into the water there using exactly the same technique. And now I'm just coming in with a slightly smaller flat brush. This just gives me a little bit more control. And all I'm going to do is just carefully dab it along the top of the line that I've created uh, just to thin it down a little bit. And it's as simple as that. You just go um, carefully and slowly with a flat brush just along that edge and you can leave this pale line as thick or as thin as you like. And I've done a little bit off camera because uh, it is a slightly uh, painstaking process because I'm quite slow at this sort of thing. I'm not very good at straight lines, um, so it does take me a little while, but uh, it's uh, actually quite meditative to do this sort of thing if you don't have uh, to rush or if you have any pressure on you. It's nice to just work your way along that line and just make sure it's really nice and straight and it's the, um, the thickness that you're after as well. And as you can see, I'm just extending that line out a little bit further using the flat brush as well. So now I've left that to dry again. Uh, I must say a hairdryer is invaluable when doing this sort of thing. Uh, just if you want things to dry quickly, you can give them a good quick blast with the hairdryer. Obviously being careful not to get the paper too hot or, or anything like that, but it really does help speed up the drying time for paintings that need a couple of stages. So. Now it's time to uh, paint in a little bit more foliage. So because our sky is quite a busy one, there's quite a lot going on there, and um, I wanted something that was going to sort of enhance that rather than uh, detract attention from it, so I opted to just paint in some of these really simple reeds using my uh, sword liner brush, which is fantastic uh, for this sort of work, but uh, I can also heartily recommend using um, a rigger brush or a dagger brush or a liner brush, anything that's gonna give you that lovely long fine line in uh, sort of one uh, long careful stroke. You want a, a brush essentially that's gonna carry enough paint and enough water to really do these long uh, fine lines without um, without running out of paint. Now I've decided to use a colour that's going to harmonise with uh, everything else in the painting uh, to do these reads, rather than sort of turning to greens and browns and more perhaps natural looking um, colours. But I really wanted to continue with these uh, lovely harmonious sunset colours, so I've mixed up um, a blend of some ultramarine alizarin crimson, a little white gouache, uh, just a touch, and uh, some neutral tints just darken everything down. So now my task is just to keep on painting these beautiful reeds. For me, this is a lovely, uh, relaxing part of the painting because I do so enjoy creating these shapes with my sword liner brush. And I think this is quite a, uh, a peaceful painting of sorts. And just imagine the slight sound of the wind among these, uh, among these reeds and among these grasses and just Imagine staring out over that beautiful lake and watching the sunset. Wouldn't that just be uh, a really wonderful way to spend an evening? Of course, spending the evening painting is, uh, <laughs> is a wonderful way as well. Uh, a close second, perhaps. So now on top of this um, base colour that I've mixed up, I'm adding a few highlights and a few shadows. So I'm using again some white gouache for some highlights to just bring out a little paler side 
of some of the leaves uh, and I'm using neutral tint to add a little bit of shadow um, a little bit of shading here and there just along some of the underside uh, just to give a little bit of extra dimension and a little bit more of a sense of realism to uh, these beautiful plants. So it's also important to make sure that you put in a little bit of extra foliage, a few extra grasses uh, around the base of your sort of larger reeds, your sort of main focal points, just to make sure that they look um, grounded, so to speak, so that they look like they are coming out of that little patch of land that we've created rather than just sort of sitting uh, bluntly on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead and continue uh, adding some more reeds down here on this uh, right hand side of the bank but I'm going to hop the camera forwards just a little bit uh, so you don't have to watch me painting reeds for the next 20 minutes. So here we are, uh, I'm really happy with the foreground, really happy with the plant life, uh, really happy <laughs> with everything uh, at the moment. So uh, a finishing touch, I'm just going to add uh, some birds flying high against that lovely sunset. Uh, so again, I'm just using uh, my sword line of brush just because it has this lovely fine point uh, that enables me to get these flying birds in uh, really deftly. And now just to finish the birds off, just a little extra optional uh, flourish. Again, uh, with the white gouache, I still had some left on my palette, so I thought um, I would give these birds um, a little highlight and just adding some extra white uh, onto those wings. So here we go, this is the finished painting. Uh, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Um, I've still got it on the watercolour block here, so I'm just going to run a palette knife around the outside to separate the painting from the block. Uh, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Uh, I really, really enjoyed painting this one. I found it uh, very calming, very meditative. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching it as well. Please uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I will pop a full list of my equipment down below as usual if anyone's interested. Uh, and also if you'd like to see some more videos from me, please check out the link below to my Patreon page where you'll find plenty more tutorials and some free use uh, reference photos as well. Uh, but that's all from me this week. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Uh, bye for now and happy painting.